Hello everybody. Today I'm going to tie up a Young of the Year sand deal and when I'm finished with this particular pattern uh, hopefully it will be about the diameter of a standard toothpick. Uh, when they arrive in the early season especially in Rhode Island they tend to be very small and very slender so um, using the techniques that I'm going to show you you can make a nice slender sand eel and if you use different materials you can make them thicker and thicker as the season goes on. First thing I did was put a hook in my vise, a short shank hook and it's not a stainless steel hook it's actually a steelhead hook a Daiichi X510 size 4. I wanted a very short shank with a good amount of strength to it. So I chose that. I have also used steelhead hooks, uh, the old um, size 2 9174 Mustads. They also have the short shank that I'm looking for. Okay, I, I put a little bit of mylar on the shank uh, to give my fly a little bit of flash. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tie this fly, this one, using, I'm going to start out using Super Hair. And this is going to be about three and a half to three, three to three and a half inches long. And I've taken my Super Hair, pretty sparse amount, and I'm going to bring that up onto the shank where I want it and lock it in and I'm not going to wind back too far and I'll take my measurement and from there to there is just three and a half inches and that's what I'm looking for for now okay so that's locked in and we're going to trim that ultra hair off or, or super hair and then I'm going to add a little bit of flash and I've got some angel hair here that I'm going to wrap around my thread this is mono thread that I'm using Gubrod Tenot just to keep the head small and get the materials in here I'm going to finish it off with something else this might be a little bit too much flash but this stuff's so brittle I can take it off after so I'm not that worried about it Next I'm going to take the top of the fly, which is, this is sort of a golden color um, super hair or ultra hair. And I'm going to bring that up onto the shank, measure it to length, and just about to the length of the other one or a little bit shorter, and lock that in. So far everything's been your standard. I could catfish this just like this and catch stripers and blues that are feeding on sand eels. I'm going to do a little something different. I'm going to make a body out of braided monofilament. It's 50 pound braided monofilament that I bought up in Pulaski and it's used for making mono loops and doing a loop-to-loop -loop connection on a fly, on a uh, fly line. This is what it looks like. I bought it five yards of it for I don't know how much, but it, you can see it's very thin. And what I've done is I've taken a piece about an inch long and I've singed both ends of it just a little bit so that it'll still open. And I've left it on a toothpick. You can see the diameter of it already. So what I'm going to do is take it off the toothpick and I wanted that end to be a little bit open. I'm going to measure it to where I want to thread this through. I'm going to take my hook out of the vise and I'm going to thread this through the center right to where my fingers are just like the old days when we used to thread a worm onto a hook before we started fly fishing. Replace the hook back in the vise. Now I'm going to have to pull this through and I have found the easiest way to do that is to use my bobbin threader 
get this material out of the way first send my bobbin threader through the middle of that on the top of the shank then I'm going to pull through you can use whatever you want I have found that Dacron backing works extremely well and I'm going to pull the backing through now your bobbin threader you have to have one end open in order to do that now I'm going to get all my materials together and I'm going to make sure that my loop is up on top I'm going to put the loop over my material it's got to stay up on top of the shank above the eye and now I'm going to pull it through cut this little piece off if you moisten it it goes a little bit easier pull it through slide the mono back up to where you want it right behind the eye and if you've done everything right you have a little bit of flash you have a nice top color and you have a real translucent skinny sand deal now what I'm gonna do is I just take I want to make sure that my hook is centered on the bottom and I'm going to take a heavier line and build up my head that I will eventually put an eye on it. Now, what I have found, why I like this pattern is that it fouls hardly at all when you're casting. I'm going to build up a nice head and what we'll do is put an eye on this and you can use prismatic eyes, the 3D eyes, anything that you prefer and, and make this a real realistic looking pattern. When the mono gets wet it, it basically becomes clear and the color on top will show through and the color on the bottom will throw, show through. So after I do this, I coat the head first with Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. And you can see what I've created here. If I take this toothpick that I started with and lay it alongside, it will block out that fly. So we have a very, very slender fly. I almost maybe have too much material coming out the back. And when I do do that, I will end up trimming some of it. So that's pretty much the technique that I wanted to show you and I hope you can use it. I mean if you use different diameter monos or live body um, makes it in the mini, uh, the small and the medium. Uh, you can vary your diameters of this fly. Um, I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to put in a finished product that I used using bucktail for anyone that's strictly against using synthetics. This is one using white bucktail with a yellow over the top. Again, it's about three inches long. The diameter is very skinny. Here's my toothpick. It'll block it out. And it casts like a rocket. Um, and that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it.